All right, so in this video, I have five pairs of running shoes that are really, really comfortable from a casual perspective. And I wanted to compare the brand new Nike React Infinity Run to the Epic Reacts, the Adidas Ultra Boost 20s, the Nike Cruiser ones, and one of my favorites, the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2. Let's go ahead and get started in this video. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys would like to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description as always, as well as if you wanna buy any of these shoes that I'm gonna be discussing in this video. Highly recommend pretty much all of these shoes. They're really, really good on feet, but some of them I like more than others in certain areas, so we'll cover that hopefully for you guys in detail in this video. This video is gonna be sponsored by Skillshare. So we know a lot of us share the same passion of sneakers. The only difference is that I'm on this side of the camera and you guys are on the opposite, but I'm sure many of you guys out there say to yourself, I totally could do that. That's how I started with this YouTube thing in general. I watched other people create and then I was like, I could I could make that, I could talk about that. I wanna add my two cents to that conversation. Well, it's 2020 now and I think it's about time for some of you guys to join me on the other side of the lens and just start creating. And Skillshare is basically an online community of masters at their craft that knowledge share their information, allowing you to empower yourself and grow as a creator or entrepreneur. If you click the link in the description, it will give you two free months to a premium membership to allow you to start exploring your creativity. And annual subscriptions are less than $10 a month. Skillshare offers creative classes for video editing, film, photography, and a lot of other areas that can help you level up your skill set. Skillshare offers a lot more than this, however, such as a video that I enjoyed called Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last. These type of videos are very encouraging and direct on how we can become more efficient entrepreneurs. Skillshare provides consumable content that you can watch anywhere. So instead of spending your free time taking those online quizzes or watching gossip news, Try signing up for Skillshare, get the two months for free, and then just start watching and learning new skills. It will definitely enrich your life and start or continue your creative journey. So let's go ahead and dive into the video. This shoe is one that, again, I really, really like. If you missed my review of this shoe, um, initial impressions, the shoe is pretty good. If you guys actually wanna see a month after wearing video for this, I will do so. Um, I think that this is gonna hold up really well and these are gonna be really, really good over an extended period of time. Nike React has come a long way in just a handful of years. And this is proof uh, that they've actually made some improvements uh, to the shoe because the very first version of the shoe was the Epic React. And unfortunately, they had a massive gap. I know it's hard to see in the black, but this section here and here are rubber from the toe and then the end cap, but all in the middle section is exposed Nike React material, which really, really wore down very easily, especially on the white or gray colored. Uh, react and so it just kind of made these brand new shoes look really really dingy and beat up and worn in The reality is the react material still held up really well It just looked atrocious But I do know why they did this because obviously they wanted a lightweight running shoe and when you add a little bit of traction on the bottom These are definitely more these definitely weigh more than the epic react, but they're still really light shoes So in the end of the day adding more traction to the shoe and a pretty good amount of weight is much better than having a really ultra lightweight shoe that doesn't have very good traction or um, looks terrible on the bottom. So I think that they made some pretty vast improvements. The other thing that they did, the overall shape of the sole looks pretty similar. However, the Infinity React is a little bit wider in the forefoot area, which actually adds to stability. And because of that, they could actually add more React to it. So 24% more React than the Epic React. And the 24% more is actually super felt, especially in the forefoot section, but also in the heel. It's just a really soft, squishy shoe, on my feet at least. But the craziest part to me is it's a thicker midsole, it's a wider midsole, and somehow it feels just as stable, if not more stable than the other one. Like it feels really quite good on feet. So I think that they went in a really good direction with this. I like that they didn't recycle the midsole from the Epic React 1 or 2. They went in a completely different direction and called it the Infinity React. I still think this is pretty much like an Epic React 3. The Flyknit Loft, they're calling it, has three different layers on top, which is kind of similar to the Pegasus Turbos, um, which if you didn't know, this is the Pegasus Turbo 2. I've talked about this shoe a ton. It's one of my favorite shoes of last year, the favorite shoe of 2019 uh, specifically, just because the comfort and the squishiness of that shoe is unmatched to most of the shoes. But we do have some heavy contenders out here because these are all really, really good shoes. So again, improved version of this shoe. How does it stack up next to the Ultra Boost 20 though? This, I mean, I could do a complete video just on these two because they're so similar. Like the overall shape of the shoe is actually really similar. The Ultra Boost 20 has a cage around it and more padding on the uh, the heel tab there at the top. This is flying it around the collar, but both materials are stretchy, 
Both have reinforcement in the toe box and around the toe cap of the shoe. And then basically you go head to head with the 20% more Adidas Boost on the Ultra Boost 20s, then the 24% more React on the Infinity Reacts. They're both really giant sized midsoles and they both have the same kind of similar shapes. However, the Ultra Boost has a little bit more stability feel to the shoe because it's built up more on the inside. It doesn't curve as much. Um, so it's just a lot flatter on the bottom. The Ultra Boost 20 is a little bit heavier than the Infinity React, but on feet, they both feel amazingly good. I will say that the Infinity React actually feels softer on feet though, and like more squishy than the Ultra Boost 20 does. This one feels a little bit more responsive, a little bit more snappy than the Infinity React. Now, it might not be that way when you're running, but when you're just walking casually and just standing in them, that's my sensation on feet, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. So that being said, the Ultra Boost 20 is a great shoe though, and I have a after wearing a one month video of these coming very soon as well. So subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that notification bell to be notified of when the videos go live. This is an um, unbelievably great shoe, one of my top five from last year as well. Speaking of top fives from last year, let's continue it. So this is a Nike Cruiser 1 designed by Tinker Hatfield. It's definitely a heavier, bulkier shoe than this one, the uh, Infinity React, but overall, like this one has more squish on feet than this one does. Like this is crazy. The stack on the butt of the shoe is almost twice as big as the Infinity Reacts. Um, although it's an interesting odd shape, and there's some quirks about the shoe that I don't really like, there's a lot of positive about the shoe. And this is the one that surprised me the most from last year. Um, 2019. I didn't realize it was going to be so good. One of the things I don't like is the warm fuzzy collar on the shoe. Not going to be a summertime runner. Uh, it's definitely really warm on your feet and it's noticeably warm when you're wearing them. Uh, but if they make a version without that fuzzy liner, I would definitely buy a pair and wear them for the summertime. That being said, these are a little bit more lightweight, definitely more breathable. And the Infinity React, even though they both have sock-like fits, this one fits a lot more snug because of the Flyknit type material on it. This mesh is just a little bit looser. Um, so it depends on what you're looking for. The Cruiser one's made for more novice runners that you're supposed to be able to cruise. However, this one is made for runners too. And it is going to be one of those shoes that you could probably run long distance on. I'm not a runner. This is not a running review, as I've said many, many times. And I know I'm reviewing running shoes, but at the end of the day, um, they are also really comfortable casually. So that's kind of what we're focusing on. All in all, this is an amazing shoe as well. $150 versus these at $160. If you're looking for something that you can wear year round though, the fuzzy collar on this one's kind of like, I mean, it really gets warm in these shoes. So I don't know about summertime if I'm going to be wearing these all that much. These would definitely be something summer, spring, I could see myself wearing. The overall stability of the shoes are actually pretty decent as well. It's nothing as stable as like a Pegasus 36 would be. Like those are significantly more stable feeling because there's not as much cushion on those standard shoes. I guess when I mean stability, I mean for a soft, cloud-like squishy shoe, they actually feel pretty stable on feet. And the next in the lineup, the one that I beat up the most out here is the Pegasus Turbo 2s versus the Infinity Reacts. This is just one of those shoes that I absolutely love. This is definitely lighter than this shoe. So this is lightweight. This has React and Zoom X. It's actually both dual density foam on the midsole. It's super squishy and super comfortable. The back horn though sticks out pretty far and a lot of people have had problems with that splitting between the two foams. So if you've had that problem, then I feel bad for you guys. It's definitely something that's real. I haven't had that problem too much and I've worn these a lot. But all in all, like this is just one of the best shoes for me. The price point is more expensive though at 180. Puts this one in line with the Ultra Boost 20. So these ones were 180. These ones are 180. 150 and 150. And then you have the infinities that are 160. So $20 more you get uh, a different cushioning setup. If I had to describe the comfort of both of these shoes, I would say that this one feels a lot more squishy, more cloud-like, but also not as responsive and snappy. The Infinity Reacts to me feel soft and squishy, but they feel snappy and, and more responsive than these. These feel like a puddle of jello on your feet, like in case jello or something like that. It's super squishy and comfortable and not very, very reactive or responsive, but it's one of my favorites for casual wear. The upper is somewhat similar with the loft type fly knit, but I will say I, I do prefer the Pegasus only because it does have a detached tongue and I can loosen it all I want and not have to feel 100% secure and snug all the time. Sometimes I don't want to have that snugness and that's probably why this is a match made for me. Uh, overall ranking of these five shoes, if I had to rank them, I would say it starts off with the Epic React at the end, at the bottom of the five, then you would probably have for soft squishiness. I mean, this is a lot more snappy feeling than these ones. 
and then I would say soft and squishier and then soft and squishier. I would say that's probably the order for the softness but not responsiveness. If you're looking for responsiveness, I would say that the Ultra Boost 20s is probably the most responsive just with a lot of bounce and kickback. Next would probably be just a regular Epic Reacts, then the Infinities, and then these ones are just not really that responsive in my opinion. They'd be at the lower end of the spectrum. Just They're just a little bit more squishy on my feet. All in all, that's kind of just a general breakdown of the sneakers. Personal preference, I mean, all of these are great. I will say the best bargain out of them is probably the Epic Reacts because you can get these for like 60 bucks now. Um, I'll try to link some in the description, but $60 is a great price for these. Retail $150. And they do have the Epic React 2s as well. The Infinity Reacts are a great new addition and they're definitely better than the Epic Reacts, but it's hard to justify the, the more expensive price of these. But if you can afford it, $150 definitely worth it. $150 definitely worth it on these as well. I love this shoe. Hasn't seen a lot of widespread releases. I think it's only available on Nike.com as of still, but really, really comfortable on feet. Recommended for you slow pokes like myself out there. I try to find these on sale all the time when they reach about $100 or less. Uh, and it's a bargain at $100. If you can find it for less than that, even better. The Pegasus Turbo 1 or 2s, probably my still my top choice out of the mix of everything out here. Just the overall build quality, looseness of the tongue and softness and the squishing. Squishing. Did I say squishing? <laughs> Did I say squishing? Is that a new word? Did I create a new word? The soft squishiness of this shoe is just the best in my opinion. These two are the ones that really go neck and neck. The Ultra Boost 20s though are more expensive than the 19s. The 19s you get for like 85 bucks. I think that is probably the ultimate deal. The Ultra Boost 19 for that price point. 180 is steep price to pay for this when it has the same midsole as the Ultra Boost 19. So you might as well just get the 19s. The upper improvements are not good enough to justify the $100 upcharge from that either. But prices aside, both of these are great shoes as well. So honestly, personal opinion, if you're going to Disney World for a week and you needed a pair of shoes to wear every single day, like you could wear any of these five and you, you'd be happy. In fact, I wore these ones when I went last time and I've been super good or Ultra Boost before that and I was super good the entire time. So any of these five would do you just fine. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, this is just my thoughts on these five. Leave some comments, let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching. And again, subscribe for more content. We'll see you guys for some more sneaker videos soon. Peace guys. Alexa, turn off sneaker room.